Hey folks, good morning. Welcome to another bike packing adventure. You claim you sell them, you say it's black. You and only place your ears flat. You never have us coming down, yeah. So at this point, I'm going to pop the uh, route up on screen. So it's 140 kilometers at the wild camping spot, which is going to be in the walls today, the Lincolnshire walls. I wanted to arrive while it's still light. Heading north at the moment towards the hills around Flixborough in North Lincolnshire. And then I'm going to be joining an A road into Brig. And that's when I kind of head over to the walls, really. So in terms of gear, pretty much got all the essentials with me, including a season three sleeping bag. Anyway. I'm going to get on the road and enjoy myself a little bit more. been resurfaced since I've been down here. Oh, it's silky smooth now. So I'm just headed to the little village of uh, Bertha on Staffa. Kind of a high point in this part of North Lincolnshire against this, the River Trent, which is just beyond those woods. It's beautiful. I don't come along here often enough, to be fair. The A18 sort of gets in the way. However, once my new bike arrives, Monday, a couple of days time from when I'm shooting this video, I will be able to go out, ride a bit more off-road, take the canal path, which kind of links up a lot better to this area. Next weekend won't be bikepacking, I'll be just going out on a couple gravel rides, maybe 130, 140k, something like that, just to see how I feel, discover new trails, and uh, you know, just come back on a Saturday night recover go out again the next day starting to look like, really starting to look like a <laughs> winter now in terms of leaves on trees there's not many left so on the other side of Alkborough I'm going to do some um, rides off road here when I get the gravel bike I've already been mapping out a few routes and things hopefully they're all rideable who knows <laughs> so I've arrived at the Hawkeshead Bridge Yeah, I can't remember the name of it, but it reminds me of a bridge I've seen a few times um, in video footage from London, Edinburgh, London. I'm sure somebody will be able to tell me which one it is. It's dated from the 19th century. Yeah, it's always worth a start, just for a minute. And if you do come this way, uh, do what I do, unless you're on a gravel bike, <laughs> and that is push your bike along. I wouldn't want to be riding just there. Heading towards the Ancombe Valley, the top end. I was going to be going around the bottom end, but I decided I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go up Piggery Lane. And that'll take me at the top end and I'm just going to follow all the way down. So here's the spot, it's beautiful. At the beginning of the ride, I was fidgeting around a bit, tweaking my saddle and my cleats as well because the bolts came loose the other week and uh got going and i was like i was like where's my glasses i'm hunting, hunting i'm thinking i've left them on the side home bloody typical i always do that instead where did i find them <laughs> so i went all the way back home like a kilometer for no reason they was there all along see the sun is looking a bit hazy over there there's not much i can show you today but this is the top of maybe it's bonby I think they're together, aren't they? Yeah, I think this is Bombay Hill. So we've got uh, Scunthorpe on the horizon there. You probably can't see much. Yeah, maybe you see the smoke, how, how the steel works. If I was to go up on that hill, I'd be able to see the Humber Bridge. 
all the way off the other side. And I'm basically following the road to uh, not well, t t kind of towards Wallaby. I'm turning off just before then and uh, heading under. Yes, I'm going to make sure I get right under the A15, which is the dual carriage way to Humber Bridge. Uh, swinging south. I think that's the way I'm going. Just case to that way. Clayton's Corner, really popular cafe. Unfortunately, it's closed a couple of weeks ago, so there won't be any more bacon butties for me there. The owner, after I think it's been about 17 years, I'll pop the year down below. It, he opened it up, Steve. He's uh, he's retired, so a couple of people have opened a cafe not too far towards Caister, uh, Wold View or something. I don't know. I think it's a caravan site there. Um, I'll find out a little bit more about it, and if I know when I put this video together. I'll uh, stick a map up or something like that. Because it's very popular if you live in this area of uh, northern Lincolnshire and even in East Riding as well, coming over the Humber Bridge from uh, Ferriby, Beverly, there's always riders coming over from the North Bank. So, you know, you'll get here and unfortunately it's, it's, it's not uh, open anymore. I've got going again, I'm starting to get cold sat there. Spent about 10 minutes doing a live stream. <laughs> very cold by the end of it. Beautiful long here. I've seen a single car. There's people out walking, enjoying the uh, hazy, cold sunshine. I must say, I'm very impressed with this aftershocks. These uh, bone conducting headphones. It's the first ride out with them, and they're really good. It's all air clear right now. <laughs> this is the wind. <laughs> yeah, drowned out the music. And it's dead easy to turn me up as well. Can you actually just use the buttons on the phone? Which is great when you use a quad lock. Yeah, I'm streaming, so it's using a lot of battery, well, down to 63%. But I used to be DJ in a former life, and I've still got all my music. I think it's about 35 gigs worth of it. So I've got a, uh, wow, <laughs> just makes it seem so worthless, doesn't it? 35 gigs. But I've got 35 gigs of all the music that I ever purchased, hand vinyls, uh, as MP3s. So I'm going to chuck it on one SD card, whack it in the phone. Go straight into flight mode, save all that batch life. I have tons of music on tap. As you see, I'm stuffing my face with food. Some dry, cold sausage rolls. So I'm just on the outskirts of Louth, Hollington. About to go up the long climb up to the Bleaston Heath Road. Drop down into Manor Road. Turn the left button, uh, Donington. Continue up wherever that B road is, not even the B road. And turn right, just past Red Hill, to take the uh, Market Staten Road. A little bit further up there is the white camping spot. One of the reasons why I stopped here was not only to have the food, spot to tell you. Just been to the uh, cycle shop, Lauf Cycle Centre. Bolt came out, <laughs> left foot of the cleat. Basically, long story short, is I had to buy some new cleats. I don't have any bolts lying around. So what I've done this time. I've pocketed the bolts. So the spot where I'm staying this evening, been there before, earlier this year. I'm just hoping it's dry in the forest. That's why I chose a wooded area really. More chance of being there and dry and not sod soggy ground. Right, long climb coming up. Better concentrate. It's gonna take me up towards the Belmont transmitter and the Stenigot Tower over on the left there. It reminds me, if we go to France next year, I want to see the Eiffel Tower next time. Not break my derailleur before I get to see the city. A little bit of a tourist attraction, this. Nice or more like. So the idea really for me is 
<laughs> got a passenger. So the idea really is just try and get away from the road as far as possible. So last time I was over here, we've got a little bit of time to have a look around this time. It's not quite so dark. I think this might be the spot. The thing is I don't want to be too close to this edge here because in the morning when it's cold, cold wind blowing, I'll blow through the woods and a bit of extra coverage wherever I can. Anyway, I'm going to keep looking around a bit more. It's difficult to do this uh, arrive late, uh, leave early kind of thing at this time of year because I'm not really arriving late. <laughs> Four o'clock in the afternoon, but it's, yeah, it's going to be a long evening. So the most of the space in the cellar bag today has been taken up by a sleeping bag. It's gigantic. This is the Van Gogh, the season three sleeping bag. I can't remember which model it is, but it's nice and warm on days such as today. I have uh, also brought with me the uh, Cedar Summit Thermalite fabric, the Compact Plus, just a silk liner to uh, go around the sleeping bag. And a selection of clothes as well with me, our warmers, thick pair of woolly socks, winter snood and a base layer as well. At Tempest 9 now, as you can see me in the confines of the vestibule. I think that's got it. Oh yes. Nice simple food. And look what I picked up at the shop. Some hobnobs, fantastic. I tell you what though, I did not pay £1.75. <laughs> Can't beat a hobnob, especially with a chocolate drink. Oh, beautiful. Well, that's it folks. I think I'm heading to sleep. I'll see you in the morning. You see it's still quite dark and eerie. Ten past seven in the morning. I've uh, just been packing a few bits away into my saddle bag. Uh, get a bit lighter now and uh, have some breakfast. The wind's dropped a lot overnight. I'm just going to boil some water off. So I've come to learn that shield is not quite deep enough really. So I've got these uh, collapsible bowls. This one is from Sea to Summit. It's called the X bowl. I'm gonna get the porridge in there. There's always a there's a two bag rule. Well those these particular ones is quite uh, generous. Right, it's coming up to ten past eight.
guess uh, better put to put the tent away and get moving. Looking a bit dull. No uh, visible signs of the sun today. Yeah, you can't tell, Ben. Many people talk about one rule when it comes to wild camping, but there's actually three, three golden rules. One, arrive late. Two, leave early. And three, leave no trace. That leave no early, but on that middle one. And at this time of year, here it's cold in the morning, and I'm, well, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I've not seen a single person. I've only heard one car between now and about 10 o'clock last night. It's such a quiet road that you don't have to leave so early here. And I've got nothing big planned. I'm just going to be heading back home. But first, a few more bits to put on the bike. I've got the pegs there to put onto the top frame. So I've got a re strap here and a couple of Velcro straps. I'm going to put those on. And uh, yeah, that's just about it. Just strap a few things on the back, including this coat I'm wearing. And away I go. So leafy. Yeah, I think I've certainly found gold. Plenty of wild camping spots around here. It's beautiful. But come here again. I'll try and pitch up on a different in a different woods, I think. There's always somewhere better you can find to pitch your tent. Got a uh, red phone box. Off in the middle is one of those water things. I wonder if it works. I don't know, probably not. And just over there, hiding behind that tree, I could have had my breakfast there. <laughs> tidy this one, tidy that one. Wow. It's quite a small church as well, fitting with the uh, keeping of the village. I'm not religious at all, but I guess religion doesn't have to come into it when you look at amazing feats of architecture like this. And there's tens of thousands across the UK. I'm intrigued to know if there's water on the back. Let's take a quick look. There often is. No, nope. never mind. That would have been a bonus. Well, okay, so if I ever get stuck out here in the pouring rain, I know where to come and hide. Go straight across here, I think. Heading towards Rugby at the moment. I decided I'm going to go have breakfast at the uh, newly opened, I say newly opened, it opened earlier this year, um, cafe at Wickenby Airfield. Originally it closed, previous owner closed up during 2020. And they also taken over, assuming it's somebody else. The only problem is it doesn't open for another hour. In the meantime, I'm gonna burn off a few of those oats, I guess. Usually just enough to get me going in the morning. Although I had some chocolate hobnob as well, didn't I? Mustn't forget those. <laughs> So what I'm going to try to do this morning, without the use of my sat nav, is get to the Wiccan Beat. So I'm going to just try and memorise those that I've been through so many times, thank you. So I'm heading towards Barrings at the moment. Well, that general direction, I'm not quite sure the road that hooks up. Uh, kind of north east of Cherry Willingham. There's a nice hop over uh, on the A158 between Lincoln and Rugby. Just got to find that road Found the turning for Barlings, not Barrings. Um, I've got fond memories of going down this road in the opposite direction. It was the first time I ever rode out to Lincoln 
and along here I just remember being a really windy cold day pretty much like today actually I believe that ride included not a co-op but the other one yes Mackey D's and even though we're only talking about four years ago I was actually harder then when it came to the cold because I didn't know any better <laughs> I didn't uh, buy any of the gear and things like that I used to go out be bloody freezing I would just ride out in whatever in fact the more I think about it it must be five or six years ago because in 2018 I was doing Audax by that point or well, this started to back then I was a big user of Strava I used it all the time and I got less interested in, in the data side of it went with my GPS the router which is you know it's more class uh, anyway in the analyze tab there I went through a lot of my old rides which I've imported from Strava a long time ago most of them anyway a few rides missing but all the important ones in there and you, you can name and obviously uh, but you can more importantly you can tag all your rides as well so I went through all my old axes all my big rides like the tour of Wales anything which is like a collection kind of thing tagged them all and it's amazing to see how many I've done over the years I think it was something like 45 Audax events since I started in 2018 so trips like the Tour of Wales the Tour of Eastern, Eng Eastern England bunch of those together as well and it's a good, great way to reminisce I don't have many of my photos on there I tend to like most people just upload them to Strava free storage you see um, I use Gmail a lot and over the years have been trying to charge more and more I mean like Gmail as well they put that in the quota haven't they so I tend not to use uh, Google Drive or anything like that storing photos anymore because it just fills up too quickly in this day and age you know storage is cheap not sure why you should have to pay for it just because it's on the cloud not far from the airfield now if you ever fancy here riding out this way it's it's just between Market Reason and Rugby, not too far off that main road there. So with Clayton's Corner closing, I'm looking for other places to check out. I will be checking out that cafe towards Caister at some point. Now Clayton's is closed. This one, it really is in the in the vicinity of Clayton's at all. Do feel free to uh, come check it out there if you live around here. Or if you just fancy riding somewhere new. Get to see planes today. Along with puddles. I think I just missed the entrance. <laughs> oh, I'll go this way, shall we? That's been turned off. I'll show you around in a second but I've just turned up and I'm just in time because another big group arrived but uh, yeah it's really smart completely different to how it was before need to have uh, deeper pockets as well look at that full English £11 pound. that's what I've gone for though yeah, look what's flowing in uh, it's a shame to uh, put a spoon in there Check out that. Lovely jubbly. Yeah, it tucked in. I'll just take a look upstairs, see if that's changed. I must remember, I could have gone round to that area. Uh, it looks like they've got some windshields up on one edge there as well. That's a good idea. I see they've got helicopters here as well. I think one of the last times I was here, there was somebody wind walking. Amazing what it looks like from the air. That's it, it's a very small museum. Right, let's get some water. Look, look! The sun has come out. How good is that? I'm gonna enjoy riding home. I don't know which way I'm going yet, I'm just making it up as I go along. The last uh, 90 minutes or so have flown by. Uh, about five miles out of 
of uh, Wickenby joined by somebody else and uh, started chatting. Turns out he was heading to Scotter. But nice to have a nice chat. <laughs> Time's flown by. So, um, yeah, not far to go. I do need to drop into Epworth on the way back. I've got, I've got a parcel to pick up. I can even pick it up today or in the car tomorrow morning. But well, it depends how I feel, really. Once I get the uh, belt off, I might think to myself, screw it. <laughs> There it is, thought it was going to come, I thought it was going to be a bigger box than that. So it's the uh, Pro Standard Grill Mount, or £36.50 pence of it. God, it's expensive. Get a lot better footage going down hills and things. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I'm off to work now. Comments, questions, put them down below. I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>